Hello, this is Jeff of Talflare Mouse. We have another episode of You Make It, We Mock It. I recently got a package of about 100 slugs from the master genius slug designer, Evan Perry. Not to be confused with Evan Perry, the yoga expert. After playing a little bit of shotgun slug mahjong, I decided these would be a fun one to try. Evan calls these the diamond slug. Now the problem is if we call them the diamond slug in the title, people are going to get outraged and emotional and and rightly so, but these are actually made out of glass. And I'm sure Evan spent a long time grinding these things down to the proper diameter and shape. Now about eight years ago we tested some glass shotgun slugs and they tumbled through the air and somehow we were able to hit some targets. So hopefully this time we'll be able to obtain stability and accuracy. Evan gave these a Diabolo shape, which is that wasp wasted air rifle pellet shape. And that's a very successful aerodynamic profile. At the base, we have a steel disc that should give us really good support and a screw that attaches everything together. The lower part of the slug is made out of, it could be zinc, pot metal, monkey metal, whatever the kids are calling it these days. But I'm concerned that that thin area in the middle might be a weak point. And if it breaks, all bets are off. Today we'll be using a two-piece discarding Sabo, and that is about the thickness of the gap of a spark plug. So that will be protecting the barrel from the glass. The Sabo keeps the projectile centered in the barrel and will also transfer the spin from the rifling to the slug itself. This is what the finished shell looks like. It looks pretty good, I must say. All we have left to do now is shut up and head out to the test range and see how Evan Perry's glass projectiles function. Well, what took you so long? I'm all set up here. Uh, we'll be using the AI powered uh, remote launcher, AI as in artificial index finger. And that was designed by Brian from Cincinnati did a beautiful job designing and fabricating that. And Brian also just sent me a remote uh, trigger switch for the high-speed camera. There it is right there. Did a beautiful job. We're going to test that out today and see how reliable that is. Now for the first test, we're going to use a smooth bore barrel. See if these will stabilize and see if we have any problems with that. Now we're about 20 yards away. That's a respectable distance that's about 60 feet or oh about 19 meters now the good news is the remote camera trigger worked flawlessly here comes the slug but it's just the base of the slug but look how stable it's flying. Hits the uh, Kevlar vest very close to where we're aiming, but the glass part separated. That's a bad omen there. Now next we're gonna try the full rifled barrel and see if that'll somehow fix our problem here. But it's not looking good for Evan's glass slug so far. Oh boy. Okay, uh, we got the lead plate, full rifle barrel. Let's see how it does. Okay, that was a very nice impact. Big cloud of glass dust. Lead plate, full rifle barrel. Let's see how it does. The oil is quite a relief seeing that it actually worked this time. I was worried this would be a nothing but a failure video, but this one flew great all in one piece and with pretty decent accuracy. I was just aiming at the middle. It was off by about an inch or so. Now the plate is made of solid lead. It's about one and a half inches thick and weighs 30 pounds. Now even though the slug has zero chance of penetrating the plate, uh, viewers still want us to see shots against the lead plate as a comparative medium. Hitting on that last shot, uh, 1354. A lot of people have asked us, if there's any difference between shooting a, out of a rifle barrel and a smooth bore, really not. I haven't really seen that. 
though we, you know, about 25 feet per second faster, that doesn't really, that, that can vary just from shot from shot. Well, that was a big improvement. I think that one held together. Uh, I was aiming right here. It just shot a little bit high and right. And that glass is just, it just turned into dust. Uh, this, you probably saw that on the high speed, you know, tumbling out. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that one stayed together. Big difference in uh, accuracy. We finally got something to show you. It wasn't much to show you on the on the Kevlar dummy, but uh, yeah, just it kind of turned into uh, like powdered sugar. Really, it's just kind of packed in there. Pretty decent hole. I'm looking. Look, it's looking hopeful now. I was I was worried there for a minute. Let's find a cool new target. I'm loving it. Look at that beautiful stability of that projectile. That sure beats the heck out of uh, a tumbling slug, right? What's amazing is after hitting that clear ballistic bunny, the slug uh, did not even break. It wasn't even phased. It just passed through that thing like it was standing still. Well, I guess it was standing still. Now, since we only had six of these, I decided to play it safe and continue using the full rifled barrel. Now, I think the first shot was kind of a fluke, and I think they would have been stable out of a smoothbore also. Okay, the slug entered right here, went diagonal, kind of like what I wanted, uh, left a, a track through there, exited without breaking that, that glass, which is a big surprise. So yeah, maybe we do need some kind of bone or something in there to make that glass it's, it's amazing to me that the glass wouldn't break, you know? How, how, did, <clears throat> how did it not break? I don't know. And then it ejected straight up. We might be able to find that one. I'm gonna go down there and look and see if, if we can find that one I slug. I did not find the slug, but as things always turn out, when I'm looking for one slug, I usually find evidence of another slug. And this was a piece of expanded cotter pin, also known as a split pin in England. I can't believe how many people said I was wrong about that. But anyway, um, this was about 50 yards down there. I'm not sure what it hit, but uh, there you go. We, I found it and maybe I saved someone's tire from getting popped. Now I'd say that's a pretty cool target. It's, <laughs> we got a, a spine, a simulated spine inside this uh, clear ballistics gel. And that came from, I saved that. <laughs> From the clear ballistics head we shot this cool neck bone in there cast it inside the gel we're going to try to hit it hit the bone and see what the effect is with a glass slug hitting bone let's say we hit it boing 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 Now this is what we expect to see using a glass shotgun slug. This is absolutely brutal. Now, not only did the slug break apart, uh, filling that cavity with broken glass, we got broken bone fragments too. Now I was filming this at 12,000 frames a second with that Kronos 1.4 high-speed camera, hoping to see details such as this. I'm just impressed. Heck, we even got a big piece of the bone flying out of the top of that thing. Wow, what an impact. Let's take a closer look at the aftermath after we wash that poor uh, simulated Sasquatch neck off with some water. Well, I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. It pretty much hit exactly where I was aiming, right in the center of that bone. It looks like it. we can see some fragmentation after it hit of the glass. So those, there's actual glass shards in there. The bone was split in half. Lots of damage in there. And then you can see a track 
exiting out the side, which is uh, the rest of the slug, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Let me let me cut it open and see if there's anything interesting inside. And I'm using a heavy royal kitchen knife. That must be British or Japanese or Chinese. Who knows? Anyway, this is where it entered, right? Lots of lots of bone fragments from the from the uh, the bone from the spine and. Uh, Ow! I think I found a glass fragment there. So really interesting. It, it did a lot of damage to the bone. Uh, if that hit your bone, you'd, you'd probably lose a limb or your uh, functionality. Very good. Very good. So there you go over there. Again, I'm I'm really impressed with uh, just being able to hit that bone from that distance. Okay. Next up, we got this. Melon. I'm not sure. I'm not a melon exer, but I, it might be a honeydew. So <laughs> my wife picked this up right before I left. So thank you for for getting that. Uh, anyway, another viewer sent us these little pins. He sent a hundred of these. I, I plan to give these out somehow, either to guest shooters or people I meet, uh, maybe uh, on Patreon. I'm not sure, uh, but. He said I could use them as a little target, so there we go. We'll see if we can hit that little button or not. But thank you, Joe, for sending those. They're, they're awesome. He sent a hundred of those things. Wow. I don't have ten friends, much less a hundred. So <laughs> there we go. Let's see if we can hit it. Okay, let's see if we can hit it right on that towel flitter mouse pin. Oh, I think we got it. Pin. And we got a little bit of a speed wobble on that one, but accuracy was pretty good. We didn't hit the pin though, I'm mad. But I was able to find that pin afterwards and it blew it back about, I don't know, about 20 feet back towards me. I'm lucky I didn't step on it. Not much left of the melon, but I did find the pin. Still good. Aim still looks good. Los! Los! Now all good things must come to an end. This is our last one and boy, I would not want to be shot by that. We could see that the slug did again break up and fill that cavity full of broken glass. Oof. Now inside that head is just an ordinary water bottle full of uh, soapy water. And I must have just grazed it because we didn't get a really good reaction on that. We just got a little bit of a squirt out of the out of the eye cavity there. That's pretty gruesome, but not as reactive as we hoped. Not a terrible shot. It was just off by an inch or so. Not terrible. I think it hit the glasses. Um, nice track through there. Looks like something shattered in there. Ow! Yeah, there's glass dust in there uh, that's not good <laughs> uh, and it just clip you can see the water bottle in there it just clipped that a little bit and we did lose we did we did we did hit the water bottle but just a slight little graze not a direct hit that's why we didn't see a big reaction but um, wow big old hole there Ooh, stop it Anyway, uh, nice track through there. Pretty good results. I, had, I I was worried about these things after that first shot. I thought we were gonna have nothing but trouble, but uh, it turned out these things worked quite well. We had good stability out of the rifle barrel. Uh, I was a little nervous to try the smooth bore more, uh, just because that first shot was so disappointing. But um, yeah, definitely definitely a fun round. Thank you, Evan. I wish I would. I, I was. I'm gonna keep looking out here and I wanna to try to recover one for you. 
eventually I'll send all these spent rounds back to you <laughs> along with some stickers and a, some pins and stuff like that to thank you for all your con contributions. I think that's like the 37th, 38th uh, contribution from Evan. That's, that's amazing. Many, many hundreds of hours making those slugs and I sure do appreciate it and so do our viewers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a uh, like if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Over on Patreon, we are currently having a, a little give giveaway, these limited edition Talflator Mouse stickers. This is open to everyone. Now, in the past, when I had giveaways, I was having some problems with Patreon where they were kind of blocking my uh, private messages. So, so I would pick someone to win, They kind of randomly there, and I would contact them, and I'd never hear from them again. This happened about six times in a row. Hopefully that bug has been fixed and I can contact and get the address from the winner. Good luck and we'll see you over there.